I'd assume Dragon's Dogma was going to be quite boring, because it looked a bit boring. But that was a long time ago. You see, as it turns out, it's the best game ever. I mean, providing you're willing to shrug off all of the things about it that are fairly rubbish and ignore the fact that when I reviewed it four years ago, I gave it an 8 out of 10. Which right now, right now, I am willing to ignore all of that. So let's talk about why Dragon's Dogma is the best game. I've got history with the game, but it's a bit self-indulgent, so I'll explain that at the end of the video for people who want to know. So Dragon's Dogma, where to begin? I mean, I could tell you that it's a game where you can immediately throw a stranger off a cliff, is basically the first thing you do, or that it's entirely possible to miss the first five hours of the game by not opening these uninteresting doors and discovering a quest board at the start of the game. And maybe that tells you that this game isn't for you, but maybe it's got your interest a bit piqued. This game arrived a little bit after Dark Souls and had some stuff in common. It was an esoteric, obtuse RPG rooted in the importance of physicality, exploration, sparse storytelling and letting players kind of discover things slowly for themselves. But while From Software created a rich, dark world of their own, Dragon's Dogma is hobbity as fuck. A Japanese game design team's take on deeply traditional Western themes, i.e. goblins. And unlike Dark Souls' expanding web of tightly knit areas that gradually expand to feel like a world, Dragon's Dogma gives you an open space and pretty much just lets you get on with it. You want to go and get killed in that cave over there? Yeah, go for it. And in some ways that can be frustrating, because it means you frequently wander into enemies that are just too tough for you and you die. Yes, you die. But it also means that it's a world in which you're frequently finding yourself sprinting through the night, praying that you aren't being chased by whatever that was. It's a world of danger and a world where day and night cycles create this strong, contrasty, dynamic lighting and make a world where darkness really does matter. You've got a lantern that you need to get out and switch on when it's dark. And then you need to put it away again when it's not dark so you don't burn through all of your oil. And you can carry your oil in these little bottles and fill them up from jars. And this is the key really of what Dragon's Dogma is all about and why it's cool. It pours a huge amount of love and detail into a relatively small subset of things. And in doing so makes those things feel special, adds weight to the world that you're exploring. There aren't that many different monsters in the world, but they're all animated beautifully and they feel tremendously alive. And they're great fun to fight with, with all nine of the unlockable classes in the game, each of which showcase interesting ideas, great combat, and offer up joyful little surprises that, you know, I don't want to spoil, but I'll have you grinning out of nowhere after 20 hours of play. I've just got this, I wonder what it does. It does this, that's so cool. And then you've got enemies that can be coaxed into rivers to get them soaked. And then when they're wet, you can zap them with electricity or freeze them with ice. And you can clunkily climb up all sorts of things, clambering up giant enemies or leaping over the rooftops in the cities and towns, just creating a sense of a world where you can go anywhere and do anything. And of course you can't, but it's the feeling that counts. And all of this stuff combines to create a real sense of gravity, pinning you there in the world of Grancis, giving you pause when you spot an unknown shadow of a monster up ahead. What is that? Do you want to? I don't know. I don't know. Catching you off guard when you turn and see a majestic splash of sun creeping over the hills. You're there. You're there. But this detail is also what emphasizes the game's huge weaknesses, this rich focus of care sitting in stark contrast with the city that's full of lifeless, empty buildings and half-finished systems, the thoughtless escort missions, the hilariously dodgy voice acting, the guy who says the master works all, oh, you can't go wrong. And there's a plot so sparse that it's a genuine surprise when after 20 hours of playing the game, you, you remember, oh yeah, there's a, there's a story. I mean, but what a story it ends up being. My God, Dragon's Dogma has got a finale far stranger and stronger than anything I could have possibly foreseen. But really, perhaps I shouldn't have been surprised. Underneath the dull greens and browns here is a remarkably colourful and strange game. A world in which you're constantly followed by these phantom friends you summon in from another realm. Pawns spouting this constant stream of facts at you like smart-ass children on a long car journey. They prove to be an endless 
source of unintentional comedy and slapstick humour, smashing through crates for apparently no reason, climbing into fountains of their own volition and loudly informing you that they're wet. And yet, you strangely become very fond of their idiocy, just as you become fond of the failings of the game in general. There's nothing quite like Dragon's Dogma. It's a genuinely unique and memorable thing. And eventually, sadly, it does become a test of patience, with you backtracking back and forth through places you've been through countless times and killing the same handful of enemies again and again, albeit in different, interesting ways. But even though I can't forget the fact that that trudge very much does set in, I still can't find it in myself to really ever begrudge this game. And I think that's because the kooky quirks and the budgetary constraints that left this world feeling empty and the narrative sparse and the system's not quite there. Despite all of that, Dragon's Dogma is a game that genuinely achieved what it set out to do, creating an excellent piece of Western fantasy where the world is brown and dark and muddy, but spectacular when caught by just the right light where caves and forests are treacherous at night, and where giant foes mean long, hard battles and battles. Battles are actually fought. Fighting is physical and dangerous and rough and magic. Oh, magic is what magic is supposed to be. Surprising, enchanting, fireworks in the sky, a sense of mad power, of wonder, a world full of danger, a world full of genuine adventure. It's the absolute definition in my mind of a flawed gem. But what a gem. But as I say, I have a history with this game. And my fondness for this game is very much biased. Back in 2012, I received preview code for a game that looked rubbish. And I couldn't believe it when I totally fell in love. I enthusiastically bothered the Capcom PR team until they agreed to let me make a preview video, sort of convinced my editor that I hadn't totally lost my mind, and then told and showed the world why Dragon's Dogma was a wonderful game. The videos went viral, the game didn't tank, and senior figures within Capcom built a shrine to the strange British man who'd just basically done their marketing. And for the sake of full disclosure, Capcom did kindly offer to sponsor a video about the PC version of Dragon's Dogma, which was an offer I declined on the basis that, well, we don't really do that stuff, and also because it was something that I felt I needed to do anyway. My videos were what made Dragon's Dogma, but it was those videos that also made me. Their success encouraged me to move from a writing job to one that was pure video, and they also gave me another idea, an idea that Pretty much everyone I told it to thought was naive and unrealistic. The idea that maybe you could have a website that was pretty much just focused on brilliant games and why games were great. And forget about the rest of it. And so here we are at the start of 2016, and 2016 brings back Dragon's Dogma, but it also sees this idealistic idea I had four years ago finally come to fruition in the form of cool ghosts. And for me, Dragon's Dogma is the best game ever, because it reminds me of the power of passion. The fact that one person can pour out their heart about something strange, unknown and unloved, and those thoughts can resonate with thousands of people. You don't have to be a cynic or on the hunt for glitches or frame drops or bugs. You can just show people a thing that you love and say, hey, this game's the best game ever. I mean, is it actually the best game ever? No. But it's pretty good. I think that you should try it. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for bearing with me when I got a bit inside baseball at the end, but I think it's an interesting little story. Anyway, if you'd like to say something about Dragon's Dogma, or maybe if you remember those videos from back in the old days of OXM, then you can go to coolghost.net and have a little chat with us. We've got some lovely people on the site. The sort of people I was talking about, people who just celebrate games. Oh, it's a great site. There's a link directly to the place where you can talk about this video just underneath in the subscription. But if you don't want to do that, it's fine. If you're just watching this on YouTube and you want to watch more, then like and subscribe and there will be more. And finally, if you really love this video and you'd like to show your support, just a reminder that Cool Ghosts is funded by Patreon. So if you love it, you might consider funding us by going to patreon.com forward slash cool ghosts. Either way, have a great day.